Good evening. You're listening to Charles on the Kraken Travel Network. We said we'd go to the UK, but it was cold, so... Okay, the fat man has arrived in Croatia in a place called Zadar. We chose this place because there was cheap flights here with Ryanair, and also I needed to get out of the Sengen area because my... Um, my residency in Portugal still hasn't been processed. So we're in Zada, it's an interesting, and we're staying in the old town. First impressions is it's really interesting. We w had a walk around it this morning. It's really interesting. We're in the People's Square right now, which was constructed during the Italian uh, occupation of this area. And uh, you know, like, it's really nice. We're just gonna walk around and look at the, sort of the top 10 attractions. So the People's Square being number one. There's lots of these town squares. There's a scattering of them throughout the city. This is the market and it seems to be on every day and lots of fresh foods and vegetables. She's caressing things again. Caressing. Just in front of the architectural museum, there's all these old Roman columns and, you know, leftover relics of a past era. So they're kind of cool. You can just, they're out, out in the front and then you just wander around and have a look at them. Immediately next to the Roman columns is this church. And there's lots of churches and really cool churches with bell towers in Zadar. But this one's especially because you get to see the foundations as well. So this was started in the ninth century. And if you look at the foundations, they're made up of Roman columns. It's like sections of the Roman columns make up the foundation of the building. In the olden days, they did things better than we do them. We all know that, especially building maintenance, building things to last. As you go around Zada, you see quite a few of these columns scattered around, quite large, imposing columns. But this one has a special story. In the Middle Ages, they used to use it as a public humiliation post. So if you'd been bad, they would chain you to this post and you'd be humiliated and even whipped for periods up for hours and it was open to the public and the whole idea was that you didn't want to be on it and would strike fear into the populace to get them to be law abiding. I feel that this is probably not a bad idea, you know, like a bit of public humiliation would probably make most of us change our ways. On the pillar of shame you can see the shackles that were used to chain the people up. You know, like we could have a reenactment with PJ, but like there's so many things. Like it would take me forever to read out all the reasons why she'd be chained to this. Anywho, back in the modern day, we're heading to listen to some public architecture that's also musical. This installation creates music using the waves. they're upgrading all the waterfront here because after World War II when they're doing the hasty reconstruction it was just all cement seawall. It's even from the airport coming in from to here which is only a very short ride you go past World War II fortifications and bunkers. By the time you arrive this section should be finished. This city is known for its music festivals and they're held here sometimes. This is the Five Wells, the square of the Five Wells, and there's a beautiful park right next to this, and it's really lovely, and they seem to do a lot of community things in these squares. That's the park in the background. We'll take you there next. You can go inside that tower, there's a gallery. Now, walking through the park, you get a beautiful view of the inner harbour as well, uh, from over the top, and there's a nightclub. We haven't captured the nightlife, but there's a lot of it, especially in summer. As you can see, the inner harbour goes right up to one of the gates uh, to the city. And in the past, this would have just been the only way in, and, but they've reclaimed some land. You'll walk through forest that suddenly opens to water views. This is amazing. This is on top of the wall. So this gives you an idea how thick the walls are. And, uh, you know, it used to be an outpost of Venice and was considered to be the most fortified, perfect fortress in the world, this city. And the last time it saw action, these walls, was back during the Croatian Civil War, so not that long ago. The water is incredibly clear and it's really nice even in the inner harbour. We saw an eccentric chap down here with his dog selling things off his boat. You can walk right around the island either on the walls or there's a walkway that goes around. 
but the tiny streets within are really where all the fascination lies. There's lots of little cafes and shops and things to explore. Because of it being an island, it's completely surrounded by you know, boats and there's a walkway across over to the new town, which is uh, a great shortcut. We are on our way to see a sphinx. We're passing through the marina. On one side, the marina seems to be almost abandoned, but it's still quite a nice little walk. I mean, it's full of boats. It's just that the buildings aren't being used. It's amazing how much money people must have to have these huge gin palaces just resting around doing nothing. I wonder if they'd notice if we borrowed a boat. There's a lot of, uh, faded glory homes as you're walking along the uh, waterfront. And some beautiful homes too. We're on our way to the Sphinx of Zada. It was built by a guy to honour his wife and show his love for her after she died. So romantic. We've just arrived at the Sphinx and I am so cursed. Oh my God. What do you think of the Sphinx? <laughs> it's a bit hard to make out through the uh, construction netting, but I'm used to being with the Kraken, who's also another name for her is Jonah. <laughs> so she chose to come here and of course it's not opened and it's screened off to the public. The Sphinx is in a relatively nice public park, which is, woo, which is the grounds of the old uh, mansion, which uh, looks like it's been broken into. Look at all you've gone through, all the crazy and the bittersweet too, all the We walked the back streets going back to Zada, and they were quite interesting as well. Little market gardens, new buildings, old buildings, all scattered in together, and then finally followed a park back with an old mill in the middle of it that had been transformed into a restaurant. got a haircut it was good and you know it was about nine dollars Australian or six euros yeah okay, so and there's two barbers co-located with a cafe that seems yeah, to be a, a thing shop. here uh, yeah a little coffee shop and there's another one just up the road as well there's a really good uh, tourist information bureau inside the walls of Zada it's time for postcards and a quick nap before setting out for the night at night time, it's really lovely. You know, you go down to the waterfront where the organ is, and there's this big solar uh, collector that's been there all day, and it lets off this light show. The day we went there, there was this dance troupe of young children or girls, and they got the whole crowd sort of G'd up, and everybody was dancing in the end. Even I, you know, had a go. And the weather here was really beautiful and it was uh, quite pleasant. Now, interestingly, we wanted to go to Split next, but there's no train. They'd stopped the train, but there's a big bus station where the train station used to be. If you're going to Croatia, it is worth visiting Zadar. Next time... Join us as we travel to Split, the retirement home of Rome emperors. Come on a hiking meetup with some local expats and enjoy the food. Here's the accommodation we tried out in Zada. We actually used three different places and you'll see the costs here. All of them were in fantastic quiet locations. Two were in the city center and one was just outside. They were very quiet and convenient. <laughs>